Hello, my name is Cesar, and this is the video number 8 on the naming series. In this series, we are developing a naming convention manager library thingy in Python uh, to help you uh, manage your naming convention uh, programmatically. So, in the last video, we did a little bit of refactoring uh, and we defined what a token is. So the way this works is we have a bunch of uh, unit tests over here and they're all passing, yes. And then we have the implementation here. So we start uh, defining this class uh, step by step, uh, moving all the logic, uh, encapsulating all the implementation details into this class. And the game was to make the test passes, uh, the test pass without uh, changing much of the test, right? So that way you can kind of change your code, you know, with certain confidence. The problem is we don't have that for rules, which is the next uh, building block on how this work. So today we're going to address that. Okay, let's get started. And um, the first thing I'm going to do is to copy and paste this uh, because uh, the rule class probably will be the same uh, so we're going to change this to rule okay so we're going to repeat the same game and let's start by this uh, add rule function so we're going to pretend that the class rule already have everything we need and we're going just to replace the stuff. So when I add a rule, the first thing would be create an instance of that class and pass maybe the name in. Then, okay, next line, it defined that pattern, but that's kind of internal because if we decide to not solve rules based on a pattern string, uh, we want to be able to do that, so, but there are the fields. So let's say rule.add fields, so you have to add the fields. That sounds reasonable. Okay, and once we have the fields, we add, let me move that out of the way. We can, here, we don't care about that, so this is the rule now. And that's pretty much, looks like. Okay, so we need to add underscore fields here. So it will be an empty list. I like to do it like that. Um, and then we have a method called add fields. And we pass the fields. But I don't want to call that argument fields because it's very confusing. Add fields and you have to pass fields, what a field is. So let's call it token names. And here was itself that uh, underscore field dot extend and we extend token names. And maybe return to. Cool, so we still have this pattern and this rule will totally use a pattern. So let's make like an internal thing, call pattern. And this will return this thing. And this is now self dot underscores fields. So we still have pattern, but it's like an internal thing. Yeah, I think that makes sense. So that was add rule. So flash rules should be fine. Remove rules should be fine. Has so that, that those should be fine. So let's uh, let's run the test and see what happened. So we have four errors and one failure. Uh, most of those is soft case, soft case. And there's this one test active. And what we are doing, we are comparing the rule object with the pattern. Okay. We could compare the 
the internal method pattern with this string and it will probably pass but that doesn't make sense because this is an internal thing now so let, let's take a look 172 let me check that test so what this doing is uh, it add a rule uh, and get the rule from the active rule and then it check that the rule is equal to the path so this basically is not a non is that is that testing so this basically saying the active rule thing uh, works it give you a rule and not nothing Because uh, active rule, where's that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that that test makes more sense. And um, so, so cool. So we fix it. We have four errors though one in the parse case and three in the solve case so let's fix the solve case so i think that stuff is at the bottom yes there it is so same game uh, active rule we don't need those this is rule dot uh, fields so we get the fields we do whatever and here okay so here this used to be the pattern but that's internal now. So let's say rule dot uh, solve, and we pass the values in. So we can use the pattern internally. So we have fields and solve. Okay. Let's do it. So def fields. Did I? Yes. So this return self dot underscore fields. And actually, I want to return a copy of that just because of the mutability. Actually, a tuple. Uh, because, um, okay, a list is mutable. So if someone uh, appends something outside the class, that will affect this thing inside the class. So I don't want to do that. Uh, okay. So I have that, and the next one was solve, right? So def solve, self, and we get a bunch of values. So now this will be, will return uh, self dot pattern dot format, and we pass the values. So that should do it, in theory. So let's run the test, and it did. So we now have the parse case, the only one. So let's go there and check it out. So I have a return. I can do this. So I get the rule, the fields, I don't need to do that. So this is rule.fields and it's a function. Okay. And then so which one? The only thing I don't like of this is that the split name is outside and it's using like this the same separator than the pattern. So it's kind of related. And if we ever decide to not do that, this would be kind of weird. So what if I do rule.parse uh, name? and return that so and move all this stuff as an implementation detail let's give it a try so you have solve def uh, parse and we got a name right and let me paste all this stuff so this is self dot fields. Okay, that looks good. Oh, 
I don't need that string anymore, which is good. Cool, so let's run the test and see what happened. And everything is passing. So we are done. We are created our own little class right there. Uh, and yeah, same functionality. Nice. Nice. So in the next video, we are going to work on the serialization of this. Uh, that means that we can save these uh, rules and tokens to the disk, to a file, and then load it from a file. So you can set your naming convention and just use it without having to reinvent the wheel every time. So yeah, that's about it. Uh, see you in the next video. Bye-bye.